I have a TikTok now. Follow me there at It's Karen Terry. Luckily for us, characters are not real people. They are not electrified meat sacks of random walking around doing whatever they want. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about MBTI. So my patrons voted and this is what you guys wanted for your 2021 inspiration series. You guys wanted MBTI. Seems pretty fitting since last year we did astrology and I feel like MBTI is kind of like astrology for people who want to be into that but think it's too hokey and so they go for the more scientific MBTI. That's some foreshadowing for later. So just like with the astrology videos where I had to break down how to read a natal chart so that the astrology stuff made sense, we have to do some breakdown for MBTI as well. This means we're going to explain what MBTI is, do a brief history of it, then we're going to explain the different metrics that it uses. MBTI stands for Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. It's a self-reporting questionnaire that assigns you to one of 16 types of personalities that describe how you interact with the world and how you see it. And these types are based on four binomial distributions, introversion or extroversion, sensing or intuition, thinking or feeling, and judging or perceiving. You can fall anywhere on the spectrum for each of these four categories, and you get assigned a letter based on which side of the spectrum you are closer to. And when you look at all possible combinations of these four letters, you end up with the 16 types. We'll go into specifically what each of these labels means a little later. So that makes a lot of sense, right? Instead of something like astrology, where it's the placement of planets on your birth, you tell the questionnaire how you feel about things. Plus, a lot of organizations use this for their hiring and professional development, so it must be legit, right? It's not. It's not any more legit than astrology. But how do I know that? There's a few clues. The first being that employers can legally and do use it. Have you ever heard of an employer using an actual psychological test? For example, something that determines if someone has a mood or personality disorder? And this is despite the fact that those things can and do affect work performance. You haven't, because legally that's not allowed. It would be discriminatory. If MBTI worked, and you could actually use it to prove if someone's a good employee fit or not, they wouldn't be allowed to use it. But since it tests something more nebulous like overall personality, which is not a protected class, they are allowed to use it. And they do use it to make psychological inferences about their employees. It also fails at a few points that psychological questionnaires tend to have to be able to pass. For example, it has poor reliability. What reliability means is that you take the test over and over and over, and in a short amount of time, you will still get the same result. Doesn't happen with MBTI. You can take the test just a few weeks apart and get radically different results. This is because the categories aren't super independent from each other. Remember, I said you get assigned a letter based on where on the distribution you fall, like which side you're closer to. Anytime you reduce the continuum of an experience to just the extreme on this end and the extreme on this end, you lose all of that nuance in the middle, and it makes the assignment relatively meaningless. It also isn't very comprehensive. Something it doesn't take into account is neuroticism, which is things like anxiety, depression, stuff like that. The Big Five personality test takes that into account, and that is typically seen as the more scientific or valid personality test. It also has poor validity, which means that it doesn't measure what it claims to measure. Oh, wait, what does it claim to measure? Content warning for this section, we're going to mention some racism. MBTI was developed by the mother-daughter team of Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers. Catherine Briggs is the mother of the pair and she was heavily influenced by Carl Jung. If you know anything about his work with personality types or archetypes, you'll see a lot of similarities between Jungian archetypes and MBTI. Jung's personality theories and typing are largely disproven, but that doesn't stop them from being incredibly popular, just like MBTI. 
And by influenced, I mean layman influenced. Catherine Briggs had no formal psychological training. She was not an academic where this was her area of study. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean she's wrong. You don't have to be an academic to know something. But with that in mind, why was Briggs so interested in personality typing? What was her drive to categorize people? Unfortunately, Briggs isn't around anymore for us to ask. The best that we know is that she originally got into this as a tool for child rearing. But MBTI is for adults, so knowing that isn't much help. There is, however, an article in 2015 by Merv Emery that is rather illuminating. In the original version of the test, there were different scoring templates for men than there were for women. And this is because they assumed that women tended to be more on the feeling side and men tended to be more on the thinking side. It's also clear that for Briggs, if she wasn't a fervent racist, she was at least a casual racist. She wrote this mystery novel, her one published piece of fiction, and the plot goes like this. One by one, members of a land-owning Southern family begin committing suicide when they're led to believe there is in our veins a strain of Negro blood. Despite their differences, the detectives agree that it is better for the family to be dead than for them to be alive, heedlessly reproducing with white people. Yikes. And that's all we know as far as Myers is concerned. And hey, that's fiction, it doesn't really prove anything, but considering that's all we know, that's pretty suspicious. Then there's also this anecdote in regard to her daughter. When a female office worker advocated for human equality across all races and ethnicities, Isabel declared her to be immature and typologically underdeveloped. The very warm evidence on the colored women to whom one could talk exactly as to equals is another case in point. She wrote, Members of a dark and supposedly inferior race are standard symbol for the suppressed and considered inferior part of one's own psyche. Double yikes. Aside from that particular anecdote, Myers, the daughter's motivations are a lot more clear and written about, and I kind of assume that's because they're a lot more palatable. She inherited this typing thinking from her mother, and by the time she was around professionally, this sort of personality test for workers was all the rage. She was, however, frustrated by how a lot of these tests sorted people into good workers and bad workers. She sought to illuminate information about the workers' personality without sorting them into bad categories. There are only good categories in MBTI, and that's why when you read your MBTI type, you don't really read anything bad about yourself. So all of this in mind, let's go back to our original question of what is MBTI supposed to measure anyway? I guess with all of this, what that means is it's supposed to measure how well your personality type fits your job, but it's still kind of unclear. If you go to the Myers and Briggs Foundation, where they actually administer the test and kind of oversee it, you'll see information not about what it measures, but what it doesn't measure. It doesn't measure trait, ability, or character. Which, I don't know, to me that just sounds like a way to describe personality with more words. Luckily for us, characters are not real people. They are not electrified meat sacks of random walking around doing whatever they want. They have clear, distinct traits and motivations, and MBTI is perfect for that. The first letter of your MBTI is either E for extroversion or I for introversion. This is your favorite world. Do you prefer to focus on your outer world or your inner world? The second letter is either S for sensing or N for intuition. I is already taken by introversion, so we use N. This defines how you process information. Do you prefer to focus on the basic information you take in, or do you prefer to interpret information and add meaning? The third letter is either T for thinking or F for feeling. This is how you make decisions. Do you first look at logic and consistency, or do you first look at people and special circumstances? The last letter is either J for judging or P for perceiving. This is how you deal with the outside world. Do you prefer to decide things or do you prefer to stay open to new information? When you take the MBTI quiz, you'll be placed along these four bimodial distributions and whatever letter you're closer to determines the letter for you. Since characters are much simpler than real people, we can use these letters to determine all sorts of things about our characters. Use MBTI for insights into how your character acts, reacts, makes decisions, 
and what things in their environment they're likely to take notice of. All these things are important in deciding what you choose to write about when you're writing from that character's perspective. All right, so that's our MBTI introduction. Next time we talk about MBTI, we're gonna get into the actual types and what that means for certain characters and what characters might fall into those types. So what do you think? Did you know this stuff about MBTI? I didn't for the longest time when I was using it. And I know that in the history and kind of why I left out a lot of nuance, but I wanted to fit this into a video and I've got sources down below so that you can read more and learn more about the history and the how and the why of MBTI. And of course, I would recommend doing that. And of course, let me know also down below what you thought. And don't forget to make it a great day. Mm -hmm.